The reading this morning is from Matthew 25, reading from verse 14 to 30. The parable of the talents. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled the accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked lazy servant, so you knew that I have harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seeds. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Right. There we go. Thank you very much for that reading. And um, we're going to be looking at the parable of the talents or the parable of the bags of gold. Um, and this is something that affects all of us. And it's really, it's about mission. It's about really exhortation, about sort of giving us a lift, really, uh, giving us fresh vision. So this is uh, uh, the last in the series of You'll Be Glad You Did how to live generously or share the wealth, really. You can see from that parable, that's what was going on. But wealth is not just simply uh, money. Uh, wealth is far broader than that. A um, uh, couple of years ago, uh, I was with some friends of mine, um, and uh, we'd just all retired. And um, one of my friends... Uh, had run a haulage business and one of them had had a successful career as an accountant and and he said he's a Christian and he he said to me do you know what he said I think you've you and Catherine you've achieved so much more he said I wish I could have you know been able to give a legacy you know what you've done in your lives and your family your churches and and he there was for him although he had a successful career um, with an insurance company, he felt that there was something missing a bit. That, I mean, he was able to obviously, he was a wealthy guy by this stage, 
but it was for him it was more than you know the money he was able to tithe into his church and I wanted to encourage him I said I think you've done some great work uh, especially amongst men's ministry he ran some quite innovative things at beer and skittles evenings and things and I thought but for him there, there, there wasn't quite the wholeness there and I think it's what we want to try and discover this morning about what this actually means about these talents or these bags of gold. So I'm going to go with, so what do we have? How can we use it or invest it? And that's the language here about the, the talents or bags of gold. It's invested. And then what is the outcome for the kingdom of God? And I'll, I'll put that in red because I just want to say something about that in a few moments. So, what have we received? And what we've received is something very, very special and something we're going to respond from. This is a parable again about the kingdom of God. The parable that we've just heard read is a parable about the kingdom of God. So again, said Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. And this is one of the many parables that Jesus gave to us about the kingdom of God. So, and the, the thrust of this is who's the merchant? It's God. God has bought us at a price. He's bought us, you and me, at a price we are precious to God, and we need to start there. This parable of the hidden treasure, it really expresses how valuable we are to God. He would give everything he had, including Jesus, his beloved son, for the right to call us his. God pursues us with an everlasting love. He wants nothing more than to save us from the penalty of sin, things we do wrong, the trespasses we make, sometimes we don't intend to, but he wants to, to save us, redeem us from all that. And he does it knowing what it will cost him. Everything. But to God, we are worth the price. If we start thinking about what we've received, we've received faith. And we therefore respond and those of us who follow Jesus will know that the faith that we have, we responded to God, he's searched us out, he's paid the price, his son Jesus Christ, and we respond, and we're glad that we did. If you're not a follower of Jesus yet, then it is worth searching, seeking for, because faith is precious. Because when, when we respond to Jesus Christ, we are spiritually at one with God. We know Jesus as our saviour, we experience forgiveness, and it, it helps us make sense of our priorities, make sense of the world around us. We have the promise of eternal life. We don't have to grab everything now in this world. We've got a perspective on life. What we're given is, is absolutely fantastic. I mean, and we'll need that sort of thing. And I, I once worked for, I once worked abroad for an American company, and I'd never experienced anything like it. Uh, it's very, very different to working for a British company. And, and what they were trying to cultivate was ambition. You had to be very ambitious. And you had to keep writing these memos. I don't know if this goes on now, but there's all these memos. And it, I was quite junior, but I, I was supposed to write memos to my boss several a month so, saying, oh, we could improve this this way, or what about doing this like this, or here's a good idea. I said, keep doing this. I just want to get on with my job, thank you. But, it, and actually I found that there was something happening in me I didn't like. I became too ambitious in my view, and it sort of is unsettling among your colleagues. I thought, this is not a good environment at all. 
And um, faith helped me. I got a perspective on it. You know, you'd go to church. You know, someone asked you to, to help out. I was asked to help out financially. And okay, I thought, well, I'll give. But uh, I, I was sort of rather begrudging about it in the way that it was asked, really. And so the, the pastor who asked me said, well, he said, well, don't give if you're not going to give from your heart generously. I had to work that through. But that was helpful, how to be generous. Don't give begrudgingly. I was asked to help out with a youth group. Then these, then these guys in the youth group wanted to start a football team. So we did that. And I ended up refereeing matches. And, you, and I thought, well, now I've got perspective on things. I am giving. I am getting away from all this ambition and all this... And in the end, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get on with my job. And your faith gives you perspective. What are your priorities? And it helps you to be, from the heart, a generous person. And that's what we're talking about today. And Jesus spoke a lot about the kingdom of God. And I, I don't just want to leave that phrase hanging. Um, if we can get this up. The kingdom of God is not geographical. The kingdom of God was where Jesus was. The kingdom of God was where Jesus was teaching. The kingdom of God where Jesus was healing. The kingdom of God was there, present, when Jesus was showing compassion. When he was feeding the crowd. Where miracles were taking place. In other words, the kingdom of God was where Jesus was. And the kingdom of God, in that sense, is where we are. So I, the kingdom of God is the rule and reign of God on earth today through our hearts and lives. So it's where we today share our faith, where we today pray for healing, where we help somebody in need, where we give food, say, to a food bank, or show acts of kindness. So the kingdom of God, when Jesus tells all these parables about the kingdom of God, he's talking about the establishment of you know, God's influence on the world. And when we exercise our faith, we make a difference. We can change the spiritual atmosphere in a place. And there's a sense in which all of us in church here today are doing that. So we're precious in God's sight. We've been bought at a price. And God has given us a mi mission. He's given us his Holy Spirit. And he wants us to see us make gains for, the, for his kingdom. He wants to see more people come to know Jesus Christ. He wants to see your community changed for the better. He wants to see, um, Simon's prayed for Gaza, our world change we want to see peace in our world so we work to see these things happen because of what god has given us and that we are able to exercise them so this is where we come in again it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them to one he gave five bags of gold to another two bags and to another one bag each according to his ability. Then he went on a journey. And this is the context, I've told you the context, is the kingdom of God. And how to live generously. It is to be aware of what we have. Could be five bags, two bags, according to ability, whatever. There is something for us to invest that is worth more than anything else. We're, you know, we're to serve, we're to give, we're to have a generous heart. And, I mean, sort of a, whether you call it bags of gold or talents, doesn't matter. It's a huge amount of money, probably 20 years' wages, something like that. So, what, so we see what happens. And so two of them, in the language of this parable, invest. The master comes back and he said, I've, 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 
You know, I've got five talents, five bales of gold more. You know, I put it to good use. I've, I've gone out there and I've, I've been able to have five more. Two more. The man had given two. But one went away and buried it. And the master returns and he chastises this one who's buried it. He said, well, at least you could have you know, given it to the bankers. But the point is that if God gives you good gifts, if God gives me talent or ability, then I am to use it. And what's going on here with this parable? He says, look, if you're not going to use it, you might as well just give it to somebody who will use it. And that's why it ends with a, quite a tricky verse, really. It says, you know, there's weeping and gnashing of teeth and all the rest of it. Because I think, think realize, ah, oh, the chance is gone, the opportunity's missed, and you chastise yourself. So, there is something worthy of investment. And God has given us something to invest. And we need to take it seriously. Um, I rather, to like the language of this, this uh, parable, I rather see um, our life really as a, as a treasure chest. Uh, the, the film Forrest Gump, I mean, Forrest Gump says life is like a box of chocolates. I don't think it is. I think it's more like a treasure chest. You know, God sees, well, come on, what's he given us? What, what a, you know, come on, I've been given according to my ability some really good stuff here, and I need to use it. So I need to have, first and foremost, a generous heart. If I am going to live generously, I need a generous heart. Jesus said very wisely, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And, you know, when I was, say, working for this American company, and I meant to be ambitious, you know, where is your heart? Is it growth, wealth, ambition, climbing the ladder? You know, where is it? Where's my heart? Where's my heart? Is it, how can I serve? How can I give generously? How can I see, you know, an outcome here, the kingdom of God grow? And I once heard a great sermon on Psalm 86. I went into my guy called Alan Redpath, who was um, former head of a Bible college, Cape and Ray, and, and that was about this, and he said, attack in the heart. And I like that phrase, attack in the heart. You know, it, it, it's what's going on in here first. You're not going to live generously unless that heart is right. And it will be if we follow Jesus Christ. If we follow, you know, this parable here, I've got something good that I've been given, and I am going to use it, and I'm going to be available for God. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me into those situations and opportunities where I can really make a difference. Don't bury your talent. Invest. So that's what, what and I just want to define what we've got to invest. Help here. I don't know quite where we've gone here. I want to go back. This is what we've got to invest. It is, it's more than this, isn't it? Our money, yes. Our experiences, yes. Our talents, the gifts that we have. Our successes, our failures, the opportunities we've been given. Our struggles, our challenges, work, or places we have been. This is what I believe is the meaning of bags of gold or talents. What, this is our, if you like, treasure chest. This is us. This is what makes us. And all of these 
Right? There's people, there's servants in the story. We can invest them. And I've deliberately put failures and struggles in there as well. Don't be asleep on the job. We can, we've got the gift of time. We can choose to invest in encouraging others. We may have financial wealth. And we can choose to invest for the kingdom of God. Not using to gain power or wealth for ourselves. We have an absolute wealth that we can invest. And that, and you're perhaps thinking, well, not me, I'm not anything special. Perhaps I'm messed up or just struggle to get through the day. But there is something, though, we can invest in. I mean, I had a bit of a struggle um, a couple of years ago when I retired. I had to retire a year early through ill health. And I experienced quite a difficult year. Um, I was ill. We had to move house. Um, you know, th those things don't always go smoothly. And, um, and yet, there was still something in me that says, you know, I've been a minister now nearly... 40 years, I've got something to give. You know, God didn't just give me all this stuff to suddenly switch off. I want, and Catherine said to me, she said, well, maybe this is your time to receive. And I thought, okay. And with one of our daughters and family, we went to the Church of England for a while. And even the worship it took a little bit of getting used to. But the preaching was brilliant, as it is here, I may add. But the preaching was brilliant. And I thought, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be here each Sunday and I'll just receive. I'll just receive. And for about a year, till about August 2022, I just received and got a bit better. And, and one day, a daughter you know, was, was on holiday with her family. And Catherine and I thought, oh, we won't go to this Anglican church. We'll, we'll find one locally here in Hucknall. And we came here. And as soon as we walked in, it clicked. It clicked. I'd had my time of receiving. I had the year out. And I came in here and you know, the worship, the service, everything clicked in place for me. And I thought, I'm going to invest here. This is my time now to invest. Like those people with the bags of gold, however many, five, two, whatever. I am now going to invest I'm going to put in something here. And um, I arranged with Simon to become a church member here, which is actually unusual because I'm a minister in the United Reformed Church. And we had to work all that out. I had to speak to my moderator. Um, and then it even went to London, to the ministries department. They called, could I be a member here and still be on the role of ministers of the United Reformed Church? And... But, and then I said, well, can't you just be in the congregation and jog along? I said, no, because God's given me some gifts. And if I'm going to commit, I'm going to commit. I'll be a member. Because I'm going to be like a Matt guy with the five bags of gold. I'm going to invest something for the kingdom of God. And I'm going to serve. I've got a limited capacity. And I don't know why I'm ill like I am. But do you know what? I'm going to have a go. I'm going to see if there's an outcome, see if there's some growth. And that surely is what we all be needing to do, isn't it? I was really impressed at our last church meeting when we were talking about you know, having a new, a new youth leader because there was an atmosphere there, an intent that says we're going to invest in our young people and our children. I thought, this is really good because there's going to be an outcome like the guy with the five bags of gold, together we're going to invest and see those young people grow in Christ. And goodness knows what they might do or what legacy is going to be left through that work. We invest our gifts, our talents, and we learn from that to give generously. Yes, we'll invest in our own interests, 
the word says, look not only to your own interest, but also the interest of others. So, yeah, I want to invest my bags of gold, my talents. I want to see some growth. I want to be able to, hopefully God sees me as somebody who's invested those talents and not buried. And he, and the implication is, you'll be glad you did because you'll be sharing in God's story to influence and affect and bring something of his rule and reign through our hearts and lives into our church and our community and even wider. And I had an opportunity which I've taken. So, okay, I'm going to invest here. I'll invest in one or two other things. But I was having coffee um, with another retired minister um, about 18 months ago now. And he said to me, he said, do you know, there's a, a charitable trust. And he said, I sit on the board. And he said, we could really do with your talents. I said, you what? I've never sat on a board of directors before, or anything like that. So um, it was quite a large outfit. They're a very good charitable trust. And their, their purpose in life is to give money for church building projects. Uh, and so, but we want to see some mission you know, carried on through that. And I thought, well, and then I thought about it. I, over the years, I must have filled in over 100 grant application forms for different things. And, and I've even got a grant from this trust for one of my churches. And then it, and he said, yeah, he said, you know, don't you? He said, he said you, you've filled in so many of these things. I want you the other side now, evaluating them. I want you the other. So anyway, I went to, yeah, it's quite a process. I'm involving charity commissions as well, I found. Anyway, I went to uh, a board meeting. You have to sit as an observer, and then they interview you and you know, all the rest of it. So I'm now, um, I now sit on a board of trustees. But that affects churches nationwide. And I'm thinking, okay, that's one of my bags of gold. I will invest. I'm going to give my time to this. It does take a bit of time. But I'm going to see an outcome from, for the kingdom of God. I am going to see some churches grow through this. And there's a legacy I've invested. There's going to be an outcome. You know, and so this passage invites us to be generous. We need to see ourselves in this way. Every person here will have something to give, to go out of here with your bags of gold. I am a child of God. I am precious in his sight. He has called me. He has chosen me. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to invest them in my community or wider. Maybe my place of work. I'm going to see a return for the kingdom of God, see ourselves as influencers for God's kingdom, to affect the world around us. And sometimes we'll see a quick return, and sometimes it's a long-term investment. And maybe things come to fruition after we've departed this life. I mean, I know that there are things that Catherine and I started in our first pastorate in the mid-80s, we started, they're still going. Each and every one of us you know, may, can give something. We are agents of the kingdom of God. You know, we're, the, we're the bringers of God's influence in the world. We can really affect things. Pair a way for God to come into people's lives. Really make a difference. So... We need to live generously, looking for the opportunity. Be aware of what we've got. How precious our faith is. How precious God sees us. And give. Go out there and extend kingdom. The church needs to intentionally and relevantly serve its community. And so we need to be these people. And even if you think, you know what, I'm in a bad place, 
or something is a struggle, that can still be given. I have to say I've learned that the hard way. But we, um, in our small group, we're doing a thing called the whole of life for Christ. And there was just some examples about people who, who were called disciples on the way. And the lady, Chris, she's 31 years old. And she has an illness that will never leave her. But she's found peace in the knowledge that God will always be with her. No matter what. But there's a bag of gold. So she'd noticed how God brought people who were struggling to her and given her an empathy through her illness that encourages and strengthens. So that is why I've put a wide definition up there of what a bag of gold is, what a talent is. Each and every one of us here has got something which we can give generously, we can share, that we can see a real difference made for Jesus and the kingdom of God. We're precious to God. We've all got talents, as I've defined them here. We use them to invest in the kingdom of God from the heart. It's okay. I've learned to... Receive for a season, but don't bury anything. It's okay to receive for a season, but there is a dynamic to engage in. My talents, my gifts, what I've got to share. Let me see the opportunity. Let me use them wisely. Let me, so it's like investing. I'll see an outcome. The church intentionally and relevantly to serve the local community. And that's what I think that this parable is saying to us how to live generously. And when we see all the growth and see the joy, you know, the God's kingdom, we'll be glad that we did.